Hey, how's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man. So, 2014 is coming to an end. It was a kind of, you know, very eventful year in terms of me, you know. We did a lot of stuff on this channel together, and, um, you know, the community is getting bigger, and it's all fucking fantastic. But, I'm not here to ramble, you know, stroke my own cock about my own channel, no. You guys are here to find out what I think is the top 10 best anime series of 2014. Now, unfortunately, compared to 2013, like last year, I unfortunately didn't have a lot of time to watch as much anime as I wanted to. So, you know, I mean, last year, I think 2013, I watched like close to 50 series, maybe more. Um, anyway, I was watching at least 10 series per season. But this year, I think I only watched like 20 series, maybe all together throughout the year. So, you know, there is going to be a lot of maybe series that you guys have seen, but I haven't. But, you know, I can't add it onto this list because I haven't seen it, right? But, you know, my list is always going to differ from everyone else's list, you know. Not everyone agrees with my list. That's completely understandable, you know. It's, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. So, what I want you guys to do instead is to go down to the comments below and give me your top 10 anime series of 2014 and see how close we get, I guess? I don't know. Anyways, fuck it. Let's begin. At number 10, we have Black Bullet. Now, I remember watching this and thinking, you know, ah, oh, this is just gonna be one of those generic, you know, light novel, lots of magic, weird parasite things, whatever, but it ended up actually being a pretty decent series, in my opinion. Now, a lot of people didn't quite like it because, you know, it was like, oh, lolly overload, you know, too many lollies for me to handle, but come on, guys, this is anime. Of course there's gonna be lollies. But I must say, the animation and the action and just, you know, the strong connection between the main character, Dentaro, and her, his partner, I forgot her name, I'm sorry, was just really, you know, the character development in this series was actually very, very good. And there were a few plot twists in it as well, which kind of, you know, went for an interesting route. So, I do believe that this series was a lot better than a lot of people thought it was. So that's why it claims the number 10 spot. At number 9, we have No Game, No Life. Now, I actually read the first volume of the light novel, uh, and finished reading it actually on the day that the anime series was announced. So, it was a kind of a weird turn of events, and I really loved the first volume of the light novel. Uh, I had no idea what it was, I just picked it up at a bookstore, so I thought, Fuck, I gotta watch the anime series. And you know, since I actually just finished reading the light novel before watching the anime series, I knew what the original content was like, so I was kind of excited to see how much they would stick to the original content, or maybe back off from the original content. But luckily, they actually kept to the original content, like the artwork was, you know, they kept the artwork, they kept the whole story, and the voice acting and the animation style, and just the art style was actually very appealing, very, very colourful. That's a, That was a very unique thing about this series, that the, the uh, colour palette was really colourful, and the, and the very bright colour palette actually really helped with, you know, the bright setting that this series was taking place in. Also, you gotta love main characters, Sora and Shido, like, oh, I love those two so much. Especially Shido. Oh, I want one. Anyways, no Game No Life was number 9 on my list. At number 8 we have Akuma no Riddle. Now, unfortunately, from what I saw, not many people watched this series for some reason. I don't know why, because I fucking love this series. Maybe it was the fact that, you know, there was no male character at all. Maybe besides the teacher, but he was like the minor... The minorest of the minor. Minorist? Is that even a word? I don't even know. Great action, great almost psychological horror. Um, great character development, um, you know, all, all the characters got their spotlight, you know, they were, they were part of the spotlight, each episode was kind of dedicated to each of the minor characters, or the secondary characters rather, so, you know, it was good to see all the characters actually being involved in the story rather than being introduced and then left out like they do in a lot of series. And I do kind of like these kind of, you know, dark school kind of anime series, like, you know, this this series very much uh, reminded me of Danganronpa, which was another great series, um, but this one kind of had a little bit more grit to it, and kind of a little bit more of a... It, it was it was a lot more of a darker tone compared to Danganronpa, in my opinion, because of the artwork, and um, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this series, guys, so I suggest uh, you guys go check it out. At number seven, we have Log Horizon Season 2. 
Now, you guys know how much I love Log Horizon, and I even went ahead to take a huge risk in saying that Log Horizon was better than Sword Art Online. If you guys want to see the video where I say that, then links in the description. And so, you know, since I loved the first season, I had to watch the second season, and so I did, and the second season, I must say, is pretty freaking good so far. It's still going, but so far from what I've seen, it is pretty freaking good. It has everything that the first season had, which made the first season that great. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing what this series is going to be like. Number six, we have Akamega Kill. Now, I actually didn't start watching this series until maybe the 10th or 11th episode was airing. Um, just because I didn't have enough time to watch it, but a lot of you guys and a lot of my friends, like my personal friends said, Joe, you need to watch Akamega Kill, like it's fucking fantastic. And so I gave it a go, and holy shit am I glad I gave it a go, because this series is superb. It had gore, it had comedy, it had ecchi, it had action, it had adventure, it had a lot of stuff. So many genres were thrown into this series, which kind of gave it a little bit of a unique sense. And I love the whole idea of the perspective of the story being technically in the eyes of the bad guy, even though the technically good guys of the series are portrayed as the bad guys. So that kind of twist was kind of unique and I, I really liked that. And number five we have Bokura wa Minna Kawaiso. Now, a lot of people, again, didn't watch this series because it is another slice of life kind of comedy series that I think is based off a shoujo manga. I do believe. I'm, you're gonna have to correct me on that if I get it wrong, I'm sorry. But this series is fucking hilarious. I love this series. The really light-hearted nature of this series, combined with the artwork and the animation style that Brain Base Studios are known for, was just a great throw-in, and this the animation style especially was very, very suited to this kind of, you know, light-hearted story. And the romantic elements were, you know, not all that, you know, irritating like they are in a lot of these kinds of series, you know. The, light, the, the romantic, you know, properties were actually very entertaining and you almost wanted to, you know, root for the main character. But yeah, art style was super cute, the story was super cute, the characters are fucking lovable as hell. And this series was fucking great, so I definitely recommend this one to you guys. And number four, we have Tokyo Ghoul. Now, some of you guys might be shocked to say, Oh my god, Tokyo Ghoul? Only fourth? Not even top three? Blasphemy! But the only reason I put this at number four was because the only really good part of the series were in the last couple of episodes. Like, don't get me wrong, the entire series was fucking fantastic. Like, I've been a big fan of the manga series ever since it first came out. So I was super, super excited when I found out that it was going to be an anime series, let alone there's going to be a season 2 next year. And of course, you know, since I kind of already knew the story, I was more interested on how they were going to execute that story rather than what how the story was going to develop. Now, the animation quality was fucking fantastic, but the thing that kind of dragged the Tokyo Ghoul down to fourth place for me was one thing was the censorship it was a little bit overdone and you know since Tokyo Ghoul the manga anyway was focused a lot on the gore because you know it is technically a horror or a psychological horror series that is you know quite gore centered the anime series kind of held back on that gore unfortunately and you know did a lot of censoring but I did kind of like how they went into an you know inverted color mode to kind of hide the blood instead of just, you know, putting a huge black bar over where the gore should be. And the second thing was that, you know, yeah, the series was really good, but especially the last two episodes were really, really well done. But then it kind of just ended on a cliffhanger. Like, I would have much preferred it if they maybe, you know, finished the story before they went onto that climax scene, because, yeah, it's a good cliffhanger, but... At the same time, it's kind of an annoying cliffhanger. Regardless, guys, Tokyo Ghoul is a fucking fantastic series, and I even did a review on it. You guys can check that out in the links in the description below. Moving on to the top three, and at number three, we have Defrag. Now, this series is is just the funniest, probably the funniest, one of the funniest series that I've ever watched. It is one of the few series that has actually succeeded in making me cry while laughing because the voice actors are fucking spot on. And the comedy was kind of really relatable as well. Like, it wasn't just, you know, fucking all over the place comedy. You know, there is, uh, I guess I can see some people maybe not liking this series because some of the jokes might not get to you, but to the ones that, you know, understand the jokes, it is some of the funniest shit that I've ever seen. And what was really funny was that I didn't actually start watching this series until it ended airing. 
So I actually watched this series, like I'd marathon this series for a whole day. Like I finished this series in one day and it was just the, f it was like the, the most fun that I've ever had ever. So guys, if you want like fucking fantastic top of the, top of the quality comedy and voice acting, Defrag is the series you need to go for. And the runner-up, number two, is Kiseju, or Parasite. Now, of course, you know, this has become a huge thing recently, especially this year, you know, with the announcement of not only the anime series, but also a live-action movie being made, I believe, next year. What was surprising was that, you know, this the original manga series was actually made back in the 90s, and it took them this long to finally make it into an anime series, and, you know, the ending result is fucking amazing it is it is really really good the action and the gore and just the really deep on this underlying you know character development and everything it was just combined perfectly into a really really good series and of course it is airing right now so we're gonna have to see how it's going to end I'm kind of really interested to see how it's gonna end but I'm hoping if it continues along you know how it is going at the moment it's gonna be a fucking fantastic series so definitely check that out guys if you haven't yet and the number one anime series of 2014 in my opinion is Nisekoi. Now, there is a little bit of a bias in this, unfortunately, because if you guys have been watching a lot of my anime uh, review videos and discussion videos, you guys will know that I'm a huge fan of Shaft Studios, who were responsible for, you know, the, the Monogatari series, you know, Zetsubo Sensei series, um, fucking Mekakushi Actors series, and, you know, the, their animation style was actually really well implemented into a fucking fantastic story. All the characters are lovable, the character development is spot on, the way, you know, the voice actors, superb, great choice of voice actors, great choice of animation, like the animation really made for a different kind of series compared to the original manga series. Like, don't get me wrong, the original manga series was fucking fantastic, and it still is, like it's still going, but the way that Shaft Studios kind of twisted with the imagery and really made this series their own just really added to the fantastic story and just completely turned it into a different series but a fucking fantastic series nonetheless so there you have it that was my choice of the top 10 anime series of 2014 did you agree or did you disagree let me know in the comments below and i must say you know 2014 was a pretty good year for anime like i said at the start of the video I unfortunately didn't have enough time to watch as much anime as I wanted to. But hopefully for 2015, there is already a fucking fantastic lineup of great series that I am super looking forward to. Namely, you know, Tokyo Ghoul Season 2, uh, Durarara Season 2. You know, there's, there's a whole bunch of anime series that I'm super looking forward to that I can hopefully start watching. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. As always, like and favorite if you enjoyed. Subscribe for my anime banter. See you guys in the next video of whatever I make. Keep watching anime.